Right, we have a function f of x is equal to x plus k divided by x plus p. And we have points a and b being our intercepts. We are also given a vertical asymptote so that goes through the axis and x is equal to 3. And then now, uh, the first question, 4.1, is saying let's write down the value of p. Let's write down the value of p. So p is always going to be equal to minus the vertical asymptote. Minus the vertical asymptote. From our information, we know that the vertical asymptote is at x is equal to 3, right? So we're going to have minus 3. Another way of doing it, we know that the vertical asymptote comes from this part of the equation, right? If that part is equal to 0, that's where we have our vertical asymptote, right? So we have x plus p being equal to 0, right? Our vertical asymptote is at x is equal to 3. So we can have 3 plus p being equals to zero. If we solve for p, we get p is equals to minus three. All right, let's move to the second equation, 4.2. So 4.2 is saying, let's determine the value of k. So at this point, we know that f of x is equals to x plus k divided by x plus p, but p is minus three, so we're gonna have x minus three. So what can we do here? We can substitute uh, the coordinates of a, right? Because we know that for a, we have an x value of 1 and a y value of 0. So if we sub that into our equation, we're going to get 0 is equal to 1 plus k, right? And then everything divided by 1 minus 3. And if we cross multiply, we're going to get minus 2 multiplied by 0 being equal to 1 plus k. So we have 0 being equal to 1 plus k. Now it becomes easy to see that minus 1 is equal to k. And just like that, we've determined the value of k. And our equation, f of x, will now become x minus 1 divided by x minus 3. Right. And then now, uh, the third equation, 4.3. So 4.3 is saying, let's calculate the coordinates of b. So b is right here, right? We can see that uh, b is the y-intercept because x is equal to 0, right? So we have b, we have a x value of 0, and then we're looking for the y value, essentially. So let's go ahead and substitute uh, the coordinates of b into our equation, right? So again, we know that we have f of x now being equal to x minus 1 divided by x minus 3. We know fully well that at our coordinate b, x is equal to 0, right? So we're going to have f of x or f of 0 instead being equal to 0 minus 1 divided by 0 minus 3, right? So this is just going to be equal to minus 1 divided by minus 3, which is equal to 1 divided by 3, right? So now the coordinates of b, we have 0 as the x value and a third as our y value. 1 divided by 3 is our y value, right? And then now, uh, off to the next question, 4.4. So 4.4 is saying, let's determine the values of x, for which x multiplied by f of x is less or equals to 0, right? So in order for this condition to hold, we need x to be positive and y to be negative, or vice versa, x to be negative and y to be positive, right? So let's go to a graph and look for those points where that holds, right? If you look at our graph, you will realize that so solution, you will realize that when x is equals to or less than zero, y is positive. So the product of the two will be less than zero or equals to zero. So this is part of our solution, right? And then the other part of our solution, I want you to look at this point right here when x is equals to one, and then go into the point where x is just slightly less than 3. You will realize that x is positive, but y is negative. So our condition also holds at that part of our function. So we're saying that when x is greater or equals to 1, but less than 3, our condition is also satisfied. So that's what we're essentially looking for in 4.4, right? You just have to look at your condition, analyze it, and see what it means. And then from there on, 
to be relatively easy to answer your question. And then now let's do the last question, uh, 4.5. So 4.5 is saying, let's rewrite the equation of f in the form f of x is equal to a divided by x plus p plus q. So at this point, we know that our equation of our graph is given by f of x is equal to x minus 1 divided by x minus 3, right? But let me show you something. We can write this in the following form. f of x, uh, we can write it as x minus 3 plus q, right? Because that will just give us x minus 1. So we haven't violated any law there. And then everything divided by x minus 3, right? So we can give uh, this term a base of x minus 3 and this term a base of x minus 3. So if we do that, we're going to get x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 and then plus 2 divided by x minus 3, right? And then x minus 3 divided by x minus 3, we're going to have 1 and then plus 2 divided by x minus 3. So now we just have to write this nicely, right? We're going to get 2 divided by x minus 3 plus 1.